Hey guys, welcome back. Would you take a look at that? New pick in the trap. GPS tracker version, let's say 3.5. It's only a minor adjustment I had to make. I moved the plastic buckle closer to the case. So as that uh, case hangs around the neck and the case is lower or hangs in the bottom because it's the heaviest part, that buckle is not on the top of his neck anymore. So as it goes on the fences and things like that, the chance of the buckle coming loose um, are smaller. And then we're also gonna use a zip tie to put around that, that buckle uh, to just make sure it doesn't come apart. Another zip tie around the case. So I hope this time version 3.5 is gonna be the winner. Uh, we also have a 5,000 milliampere battery on it. I think it's a smaller pig. I actually have not looked at it yet. It's over there in the uh, trap, but I saw one picture and the picture looked like it's a little smaller dude. So let's do this. Behind the camera right now is the power wagon, Chris. Also have Eric in the truck. Uh, that's all we need for a successful GPS track on a pig. Dude, you can't get through there. That's not the door. That's definitely not the door. Fast. Yeah, here's a fast one. Okay. Was it your favorite? <laughs> no, it's not. It's my door hat. Uh, do you want to get the gate? Yep. See if he grab his legs. Yeah. Don't let that pig eat out that headlight. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> might get it. He's got his head. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Going up the hat. You got him? At least you got your favorite hat. Yep. Okay, I'm staying away from that pig. But Eric, step back, buddy. Step back to the truck. What? Step back to the truck. The tracker uh, behind you. Alright. Uh, you bunk on the side. I'm glad I wasn't wrestling that pig. <laughs> Famous last words? For me or the pig? For you. <laughs> nope. Just gotta run like hell. Alright. Alright. You ready? Yeah. Thing is running, so you should be good. You ready? Yeah. Go on now. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, that Pig one was a fighter, man. It was fast. Piggy Smalls? Piggy Smalls. I like it. That's a good one. Let's take a look at your cap. Yeah. So <laughs> Chris's hat came off as he was grabbing the pig and uh, the pig got a little angry at his hat. <laughs> Let's see how it looks. Eh, not too bad. <laughs> what do you think Eric? Was it fun? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You did a good job filming, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you for the high five. There you go. So yeah, uh, that pig was bigger than I thought. In the picture, it looked much smaller than he actually turned out to be. 
but I feel pretty good about the tracker right now. It fit tight? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't too loose, wasn't too tight. Hmm? Won't fly. Yeah, we are getting getting his location. It's turning the live tracking. All right. Oh, there we go. So the pig is somewhere over here. It went in this direction. There's a bunch of brush. Uh, I got live tracking on right now. Blue dot is us. Pig is over here. It's not moving as much right now. But I think it's still moving, that's the important piece. So I, I want to make sure that the tracker stays on there. It doesn't fall off or something. But strap design is different. Put the plastic buckle much closer to the pelican case, like I said. Now with gravity, the, uh, the case is going to be on, on the bottom, uh, under his jaw basically. And the buckle right next to it. So that should help quite a bit. And uh, then we put zip ties around it. Zip ties around the plastic bu uh, buckle, zip ties around the case. I feel good about this. It's like this is going to be good. Also, the 5,000 milliampere batteries all the way charged. I got an extra charger for it. So this thing should run. I'm going to turn live tracking off because I think I don't need that right now. I just want to make sure he actually is transmitting and I'm getting data. So I'm going to turn this off now. There's a button up here. Stop live tracking. And now just let the tracker do its thing. It's going to submit between... In the regular mode, it's submitting between three minutes and an hour it says and it depends on the activity of the, the pig so as it moves you would get a ping every two to three minutes uh, if it doesn't move much you know you get a ping every every hour every few hours i had some stretches where there wasn't a ping coming back for a few hours so um i think should be good uh, i'm excited to see this data coming back uh, he was a decent sized boar uh, piggy smalls the new name um I don't think I got hurt. I hope Chris didn't get hurt. But it's a good experiment. Let's see what, what comes back. And hopefully uh, 3.5 is the winner. We're going to do one more thing. I'm going to set the other trap, which is further below on the property. Uh, we are going camping on Saturday. Today is Thursday. And I have a spy point camera with me. I want to put the spy point next to the trap. Set the trap again with corn molasses. And... Uh, Basically, we have two nights tonight still, and then tomorrow night to maybe trap another hog and uh, maybe have some some hog meat for camping because I'm kind of excited to maybe try to uh, do a backstrap over an open fire or something. So let's go check out the trap. So I think that makes a difference. It's deer molasses, a gallon for like nine bucks or something, a tractor supply. I know a lot of folks do like the hog mash and whatnot, mix it up and let it sit for a long time. I like to keep things simple and save some time, so I use corn, plain corn, and then molasses on top. Works at the feeder, works at bait holes, and also works at the trap. So, makes it easy on you, and uh, it's not very expensive and not very time intense. So let's put some, put some molasses on there. Texas Yak Tree Trimming Services. I think this would be good. I'm going to take down this little vegetation thing here. The second we tag this hog with a GPS tracker, we actually already get data back. So they use mobile data to actually transmit GPS locations. We use Tractive.com and their GPS trackers. We modified them to make them fit our use case because we need a long lasting battery. But after this modification, we actually get to harness the true power of Tractive.com, which is a great set of features on their website, which enables us to really understand how these hogs move. Now let's talk about real quick how this works. After you log into your account and you go to history, you get a view similar to this. In a few steps, you can customize your view, most importantly, the map layers. Of course, for our use case, the satellite imagery makes the most sense. The next most important step is to pick your dates. In this case, we knew when we tagged the hawk and also when we retrieved the tracker again. So we picked those two dates and now I have a slider on the bottom where I can move 
uh, left and right and therefore move the hawk along its track and see exactly what time and date that was. We have five days worth of data and over 25 miles traveled, so that's quite a bit and definitely too much to cover in this video. But there are a few highlights I would like to share with you guys because I think they're pretty interesting. So let's start right here. This is where the hawk was trapped then the GPS tracker was attached. You can see shortly after we have a little bit of a heat map here to the left. This is where we have more data points due to the live tracking we enabled briefly. So lots of data points are coming back and it shows us as this heat map. So this is how this works. The more data points you have in one location or close to one location, it generates a hotspot visualized here red, indicating that lots of data points came back. Now as a hawk spends more time in a certain area, let's say for example right here, we get more data points and it shows us a hotspot. Zooming out, we will see that we have a concentration of data points in certain areas. And those are the highlights I want to cover here. Let's start in the top right. We have an indication up here with a hotspot. Though the hotspot isn't very big, but we can see that lots of tracks are going in and out. What I realized is, even though the hotspot is fairly small, but all these tracks going in and out, this has to be a bedding area. They're going to go in there, lay down, rest, and eventually leave. But you won't see that these hogs are moving back and forth a lot in here, rooting for food or anything like this. And that was what I noticed when I actually later on went into this bedding area and took a look around. There's few hog signs other than the bedding areas. But you can see lots of paths go in and out this, this area. So this is a hotspot. This is a highlight for this video. Bedding area number one. We also see that there must be another one right here. And here's where the data gets a little more crazy. You can see it's going all over the place. There's some GPS inaccuracy ha happening, so that's why we have uh, all these lines. Take a closer look, there's also a power line on top. I don't know if a power line like this would interfere with GPS signal or anything like this. I have not looked at this area yet, but it's the spot I have on my list I wanna check out. Highlight number three is actually down south. So we can see this hog traveled in a similar pattern like the first hog we ever tagged. It went all the way from the north area, limited by this arm of the Colorado River, which is called Cow Creek, uh, to almost the bottom of that, that stretch, where again, there's a limit, limiting factor of the Colorado River. This hawk in particular spent quite a bit of time down here, and it's something I noticed in the data. It spent basically a whole day in this open area. This is not a wooded area. This is just an open field, it looks like. I'm guessing it's maybe tall grass, but this pig has stayed in this spot, in this area, for over six hours. So I'm thinking this is another bedding area, though I don't have access to this property, so I don't know what it looks like. It also moved over in this slightly wooded area and spent a significant amount of time over here too. That is yet again another bedding area. So what we learned from this data is that these hogs have multiple bedding areas in different locations. And it's hard to predict when they would be at a certain area, but that's where the GPS location and GPS tracking is helping us out. I ultimately needed to get this tracker back because I don't want to leave a collar on a hog for an extended period of time. Ultimately, we also want to get our investment back in the time we put into fabricating this, this tracker and collar. So after about a week worth of data, the tracker showed me 20% battery level. So I was thinking now is the time to go after this hog before I risk the battery dying on me and then I wouldn't know where it is. And it's going to be mostly luck to get at the right spot at the right time to get this tracker back. Once this hog was back in an area where I'm somewhat familiar with, I decided now is a good time to go after it. So the big task for now is to get this pig with the tracker back. It has been out now for five days, so I got five days of data. Battery is down to 22%. Uh, I need to get this hog today, otherwise I'm, I'm risking just that the battery uh, goes dead and then it's going to be a, a much harder for me to find. Um, the pig is somewhere down there, I have it on my, on my app. It's actually in the same location I marked before as its home location. Um, the tracker on this app has um, 
kind of like a geofencing or home uh, feature. I happened to set the home for this tracker basically in this area and that pig uh, actually went back to it. So that's that's an area where it had stayed before for quite some time. Um, so I'm thinking this is one of the hot spots where they actually stay. Uh, you guys can see it here in the app hopefully. But uh, that's where I'm heading right now. So four minutes ago, last ping. Um, I'm gonna sneak down there as much as I can. Um, just taking my truck. I'm gonna park a um, few hundred yards away from it. Um, I'm gonna take my Steyr uh, Tactical Scout. I'm kind of concerned how, how thick it is down there. It looks heavily vegetated. I kind of know the area. It's a little hill, I think. Um, the the noise level is gonna be a, a problem, but uh, the good thing is I have this live tracking feature on this app, so once I'm close enough, I'm gonna hit live uh, and see if I couldn't get on it today. Let's get this going. At this point, the app tells me I'm right on the edge of the home area or home geofence. And then we have some GPS inaccuracy, so I know I'm really close. With every step I take in here, my hope for actually getting close enough to them without spooking them is shrinking. Every step just feels way too loud. If you look closely in front of me, there's a first bedding area. Almost no leaves in the ground, bare dirt. This is one of the spots where they hang out. Now the big question is, how the heck do I find out which one has a color on? Because all of them are laying down on their side, on their belly. At this point I can't see which one has a color on. I just need to get it closer to get a better vantage point, so I have a better chance of actually seeing which one has a color on. I'm just glad I have a black belt in yoga.
At this point, I'm at between 20 to 25 feet from them. On the right side of the tree, there's at least two pigs in the ground. On the left, there's a more pigs as well. I still can't make out a hog with a orange color on it and or a yellow pelican case. I got two picks on the ground and my pulse is at about 180. And my heart is just beating. I was able to <clears throat> get maybe within 10 yards. It was ridiculously close. And I got him on the way out. At some point, I think one of them must have smelled me. He got up or she, I don't know made an alarm sound, all of a sudden everybody gets up and runs out. I take one shot at one, but uh, one of the bigger ones, because I couldn't see the tracker yet. Uh, but <clears throat> there was a miss, and all of a sudden I see, I see him with the tracker on it, uh, running through the brush, and I somehow was able to uh, thread that, that needle through these trees. I mean, look at this. There's trees everywhere, and I was... Uh, so my back here. So he's on the ground. I got him in the rear, but pretty nasty wound, so that's, that stopped him. And, and then I gave him a pistol around to the dome. And then I have one more through here, through the trees. Uh, they headed back there, and I was able to get between those trees here. Made another shot. Whatever it is, it looks fairly decent sized. But man, uh, I can't believe I actually got close to them that, that much. I mean, I was doing basically uh, like the game twister through these trees. I mean, they're so thick and everything is so noisy. Every step I took was some noise, but somehow they didn't wake up. One of them moved when I was at like 20 yards and uh, um, laid back down. So maybe it's just they're overly confident in their bedding area here that they uh, just don't think something would happen. So. Wow, uh, that was kind of what I hoped for with this experiment. One, I mean, we wanted this, this crazy data back, which we have now. Two, I wanted to be able to ambush them uh, where they bed down, and I was able to do that just now. Only problem is, though, you couldn't do that with, like, five people or something so you can more, get more shots. It's just, uh, it would be too noisy, I think. Right. Well, we have the tracker back. That's, that's what, I, what I came for today. The other pig is back down, down here. So let's go check it out. But yeah. My trusty Steyr Tactical Scout delivered again. Fantastic. That was fantastic. Just totally excited right now.
good sized sow. Success, that was awesome. <clears throat> I was lucky that when I uh, got so close to them that I had what seemed to be another one of their bedding areas so close because it was all clear. There was no leaf, no branch on the ground, all just loose dirt. That allowed me to move pretty quietly. I was probably able to gain another uh, 10 feet on them, something like that, in that area. And that was just enough to get a higher angle on them so I could see down because everybody was laying down. There were so many hogs in there, must have been like 10 or so. I couldn't make out the tracker. Even though it's like this big yellow case and uh, the orange strap here, I couldn't see it and I also didn't remember what coloration that, that, that pig was, so... Man, knock on wood. I'm lucky. I should play the lottery here pretty quick. All right, let me clean this up, take the tracker off. There's no way I'm dragging these, these hogs uh, out of here. I mean, it's too thick, so I'm gonna leave them here. I guess yeah, the next, next test would be, are these hogs coming back to their bedding area with dead hogs next to them? I might grab one of my spy point cameras and put it in that spot and see if we can if we can catch them come back here in the bedding area, it would be fantastic. So let me do that and see you guys in a bit. So it's pretty obvious that this is a hot spot. I can see about three different bedding areas. I'm standing in one big one right here. And I just put up a camera right next to it over in that tree. There's a small area over here where they bedded down and where I just shot the hawk with the tracker and uh, where all the other hawks were laying down is over here. So three bedding areas really close to each other. Again this is one of the spots where it makes perfect sense to have a bedding area because you have so many cedar trees around here. They feel super secure <laughs> as we were able to see today. Um, they might even be overly confident with the fact that I was right here next to this tree and I shot them back here and that, what, that's probably about 20 feet or so. So, crazy. I did not think this would work out like that. I'm still pretty surprised uh, by the fact that I was able to do this today. Anyways, time for me to get out of here. Um, camera's up, hopefully we get some pictures on you pretty quick. Uh, I got the tracker back. Uh, gonna take a closer look. I have a new battery coming in, um, which is actually double capacity of what it is right now. This one was a 5000 milliampere battery, um, which ran now about five days. So I'm gonna up this to 10,000 milliampere. Uh, hopefully we get over a week out of it. And then I want to start exploring some other areas. I think we have a fairly good idea of how they travel in this area. Um, I want to do the same thing now in other areas and see what kind of patterns we get there. Do they travel even further? Um, is the, the river here basically a limitation for them? So that's why they wouldn't travel any further. Um, so lots of data to, to, to get back and a lot of things to learn. Uh, I find it super fascinating. I already heard from some of you guys that you want to replicate this experiment. Um, I'm going to put the complete parts list in the description below. I would appreciate if you guys use my Amazon affiliate links because ultimately uh, it's a lot of expense for me here try, uh, doing all these experiments. I can't tell you how many dog colors I bought and all these things. So um, I'm trying to get some of my investment back. If you guys wouldn't mind using those affiliate links, it's highly appreciated. Um, anyways, if you do the, run this experiment, please, please share the data. Uh, I'd love to see some screenshots of how far those pigs um, roam in your areas. And let's just all work together. You guys get on Facebook, join our um, Facebook group, which is US Hawk Force. So u.s.hawkforce. And, uh, and let's, let's do some research together. Thank you guys. See you soon.